Hey guys, my name's Garrett. This is gonna be one of my new shows called Scale. We're gonna look at WWE, NXT, Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling. If I'm able to watch it, I'm gonna do a show on it. We're gonna kick things off with Raw from this past Monday night. I'm gonna look at every single segment, give it a rating on a scale of one to 10, and then at the end, I'm gonna give the whole show an overall rating. So without further ado, let's get started. We do kick things off with Roman Reigns. And I gotta get out in front of something now. I was definitely one of those people that did not care for Roman Reigns. Didn't hate the guy, just did not want him to be the guy. This past Monday was truly, truly an amazing sight to see him come out, announce that he is in remission, the, having the entire arena chanting, this is your yard, which is incredibly ironic considering what happened two years ago after WrestleMania 33. Um, truly a, an awe-inspiring moment. I, I am not planning on giving out many 10s, but this segment has to get a, get a 10 in my book. And I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me. And just so y'all know, 10s are going to be as rare as a Dave Meltzer 5-star rating in WWE. Alright, next up we got Aleister Black teaming up with Ricochet to take on the Revival. And why did this match happen? Why? Why? This match should not have happened. Plain and simple. In ring, I mean, it was awesome. The two teams did great together. But why did this match happen? You're burying your Raw Tag Team Champions. What the hell is going? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you thinking? <sighs> Again, in ring, the match was awesome. So, uh, I mean, I, okay, I'm gonna give it a four. We go backstage. We've got Charlie Caruso interviewing Baron Corbin. And it's gonna get a two. The only thing I really saw here was maybe uh, some seeds being planted for a Baron Corbin versus Roman Reigns match. Elias is out, getting interrupted by Lacey. Um. This needs this whole Lacey walking down, doing her little spin and wave, and then walking back up. It's really getting old. I know that she can wrestle. I've seen her in the ring in NXT. She's she's very good. Why WWE is not putting her in the ring is beyond me. Luckily though, Dean Ambrose came out to save this segment. I really hope that uh, Ambrose still is able to have a match on the WrestleMania card if he is lead for sure leaving. Um, so this segment, uh, because of Lacey Evans, it brings it down a little bit, but Ambrose right, right back up. Uh, let's go with six. The Riot Squad, Ruby and Sarah Logan versus Natalia and Ronda Rousey. I don't know what it is about these matches with Natalia and the Riot Squad. I, I don't know if it's just completely overdone or what, but... They're just not that exciting to watch in the ring anymore. Um, but of course, this the match wasn't the point of this whole segment. The actual point of it was to introduce Becky Lynch as Beatrix Kiddo. She came out of the crowd again, wearing the black and the yellow stripes. Pretty pretty badass look. Uh, if anybody could pull it off, certainly Becky is pulling it off. Match wasn't that great. It was pretty clunky, but the whole segment was about furthering the women's championship match between Becky, Ronda, and Charlotte, which is great. And how they're utilizing Ronda now is is brilliant. Uh, to have her as the person in the middle, you know, to kind of say, hey, Becky got screwed over. She needs to be in this match. Make it a triple threat or I'm not in it. That's pretty badass. That's pretty cool. Her delivery on it could use some work. All in all, this segment is going to get a seven. Next up is Jinder Mahal calling out, making some type of open challenge, which is answered by Kurt Angle. Um, the match itself was not that great, but I did like seeing Kurt Angle getting a singles win. Uh, honestly, I think this was... I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this was Kurt Angle's first singles win since returning to in-ring action a uh, year and a half ago. Yeah, year and a half ago at TLC. I was glad to see Kurt Angle get the victory over Jinder. I, I love that he's totally putting over guys like Baron Corbin and Drew McIntyre, but Jinder Mahal is definitely not somebody he needs to be putting over, and I don't think anybody will disagree with me on that. So for the simple fact of Kurt getting his victory, I'm going to give it a 4.5. Uh, like I said, the match wasn't that great, but Kurt got his victory. All right, a moment of bliss that's not very blissful. This is just a cringeworthy segment. It really was not that entertaining at all. Uh, the whole idea of how they're trying to bring sex back in the WWE is just 
not working um at least the way they're going about it it's not i don't even see the point of it honestly the best part about this segment was when leo rush interrupted to lead into a match with finn balor for the intercontinental title which leo lost uh and I mean, it wasn't a bad match. It's just the the entire everything that took place before it. I gotta give it a two. Uh, this is just uh, this is just bad. Backstage segment with Ascension and Heavy Machinery. Um, love Heavy Machinery. Um, I just I don't really know what to say about this segment. I'm just gonna give it a three and then just move on. On to Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman, which was a match that never even got underway. Um, but it was nice. I actually, I didn't, I didn't hate the segment, you know, two big guys just beating the hell out of each other, uh, obviously going to lead to another match, most likely at Fastlane or maybe even WrestleMania. Um, not, not a bad, not a bad segment. I'll give it a, I'll give it a five. Up next is Seth Rollins being interviewed by Charlie Caruso, which wasn't bad. This along with, uh, Ric Flair's arrival, uh, I, I'll give the segment a five. Uh, it was good to see Nate styling, profiling on out of that limousine. I do gotta bring mention to the transition that happened in between these two scenes. It was really weird because the, if you look at it, the background of the scene is almost identical. The big open garage and having it in two back-to-back -back scenes is just... I thought Kevin Dunn could do better. Up next is Ambrose and McIntyre in that no disqualification match, which earlier in the night Ambrose had requested prior to knocking out Elias and getting on his bad side. So at that point in time, it was very obvious that Elias would be retaliating in this no disqualification match, which he did by smashing that guitar over Dean Ambrose's back and costing him the match. And then out came Baron Corbin and Bobby Lashley, who invited Elias to into the ring with them and McIntyre to give a four-on-one beatdown to Dean Ambrose. And then we get Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. And of course, everybody wants to see Roman in action, of course. The whole idea of them coming out to save Ambrose, from Roman's perspective, I can see it because Ambrose didn't really do anything to Roman. And Ambrose is, you know, his character is a little crazy. So yeah, you know what? I dug it. I absolutely dug it. I'm going to give this entire segment, uh, match, all of it, uh, do a 7.5. And then we have Bailey versus Nia Jax. This actually was not that bad of a match. Man, it just goes to show how good of a worker Bailey is. And man, she just pretty much anybody, anybody I've seen her get into the ring with, she can go, man. I mean, she can not only make herself look good, but make her opponent look good. So the, Bailey is an, an incredibly underrated and she deserves a lot more credit than she gets. Uh, giving this match a six, because yeah, it, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it was, it was a masterpiece or anything, but it just, it goes to show what Bailey is capable of doing. And for the moment that has been hyped for the last couple of weeks, we have been suspecting that it's been a moment hype for Becky Lynch. No, not at all. In fact, we got one of the biggest surprises in years. Straight up, this was awesome. Uh, all right, so Triple H, Stephanie, come on down. They bring on down Shawn Michaels, Kurt Angle, Ricky Steamboat, Sting, guys who have all had history with Ric Flair. Uh, they show an awesome video package. Uh, and then... No Ric Flair. And then we go backstage to see a cameraman being dragged in front of a locker room by none other than Drax the Destroyer. Yes. He goes into Ric Flair's dressing room, slams the door shut. You hear some pounding going on. Door opens back up. Batista drags Flair out into the hallway and takes his glasses off, looks into the camera, and says, Hey, Hunter, do I have your attention now? And then just lets out a roar with a nice little sadistic smile. And this was very well done. Very well done on Batista's part. Giving him mass props. I uh, know, when was that? About five years ago when he came back to win the Rumble. Uh, he said he wanted to come back as a heel. And he's doing that now. And I can I totally see why. He is awesome. And this 
rivalry leading up to WrestleMania, I think is going to be awesome. Undoubtedly a great surprise. I'm not the only one who was happy with this, I know. Uh, huge surprise. Very well done. Giving this a 9.5. That was a great ending to this week's episode of Raw. Uh, Got to give it a 9.5. Uh, bringing us to a total, grand total of 5.5 for uh, this first episode of Raw on Scaled. Thank you all for watching. This is just my first episode of Scaled. Hit that like and subscribe button for more. There's going to be a whole bunch of different types of videos coming soon. So go ahead and uh, stay tuned. Visit me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Patreon. Thanks.